We are so honored to have today you, Slav Hermanovic, from the University of Berkeley here, um, for, from a Fulbright professor here from, who was here at the BOKO in Austria in 2008 to 2009. So it's especially dear to my heart to ha host you here because you were at my alma mater. So oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I started. So it's wonderful to have you here. And um, there's also some a small secret you shared with us. Uh, your favorite Austrian coffee is a Große Brauner. So I wish you a good break here with us. A wonderful chat. And I would like to start uh, with the first question. So Slav, tell us a bit about you. Well, as you know, I am a professor in Berkeley. I have been here for quite many years. Uh, my professional interests are in, uh, I would say, environmental biotechnology, water management, and sustainability, but with a strong interest also in practical applications and entrepreneurship. So I come originally from Poland. I grew up there. I went to uh, school. I got my first degree, the master degree uh, in, in Warsaw. Uh, then I was uh, fortunate to go to uh, University of Toronto in Canada and got my PhD. And then Berkeley hired me from there. So in a way, my career path is not very complicated, mm -hmm. but I also had a privileged of being a distinguished Fulbright Chair in, in uh, uh, at Boku in Vienna. And I lived by my account in uh, six countries, if you count eight months work uh, as a criterion. So that's an experience. Wow. Um, so, you are, so, so you have a broad and long experience about um, living abroad. And I can imagine that it was at that time um, a very special, special opportunity to come with the Fulbright to Austria. So what was your first impression about the Fulbright program when you applied? Well, I knew about Fulbright uh, for quite a long time before I applied. I was looking at this and first of all, it is a great program. It's the concept that originated after Second World War was to create this program will bring people, um, scientists, professionals together. And that's, I think, one of the great successes of the, the people to people politics or diplomacy. Uh, from my personal experience, I was looking for a place where I could spend some time and, uh, you know, not just go for a short term visit, even a week or two weeks if you go to a, a place to uh, work with your colleagues and essentially also find new culture, that's not enough. And Fulbright is one of these unique opportunities for US uh, scholars to go and spend a considerable amount of time in another country. So that was something I was looking very actively forward. And then I uh, found that this was a new uh, distinguished chair program that was being opened at Boku. And, and it's actually interesting uh, experience because at that time, uh, you know, I was trying to find some more information. I actually called the office in, in Washington and they told me, well, it's only starting and we don't have exact program. We only have these very general parameters and we don't know which will go. And to this, I said, well, let me try to write the program for you. And that was my submission, my proposal. And I was very uh, honored and privileged to be accepted uh, there. And uh, that's how it started. So again, it's a unique opportunity that I would strongly recommend for everybody to at least consider. So when I, when I think about um, our new grantees or the people who are currently looking and reviewing um, the grants available, so how was the selection process at that time like and how did you end up at the BOKU then? 
Well, the selection processes I know only kind of from from the uh, applicant side. There is a there is a process of writing the application, the proposal, and in my case, this was a completely new program. So, I just wrote what I thought was important in in this area. And then, yeah, you have to fill certain forms and then uh, get references and then you wait and then you wait a little bit more. And finally, a good, uh, good uh, you know, message comes that you were selected. I understand that the process is kind of going back and forth between US and the host country. Uh, so on that part, that, that was essentially my experience. In a way, it was fairly seamless, fairly standard. There was no particular issues there. So that's uh, that's that's a good part. And um, then you you got this good message. You prepared yourself to come to Austria. And what was your first impression when you came here? Well, you know, we. We knew Austria, both from our previous visit. I say we because I came with my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and also because uh, being from Poland, Austria is a part of our regional history and, and heritage. Uh, but uh, so the first impression is always the same, I think, as a tourist, that it is a beautiful country. It is a country that is well organized, but I think what's special is that it's a country that, uh, and, and not a country, it's a people that value culture, value education, and you can see also a joy of life. That comes perhaps a little bit later when you are able to see how many events in every village happens. You know, there is a celebration of the grape harvest or we were very, very happy to be there before Christmas. So you have, of course, the beautiful Christmas markets. And then after Christmas, you have uh, the balls. And, but it's, it's the, the combination of uh, certainly hard work, uh, appreciation of the environment and the, the joy of life. So it's a, it's a very, in a way, unique experience. But also it's not an experience that should be frightening. It's, you know, it's, you become there and a, you live normal life. There's virtually no cult, uh, linguistic barrier because everybody speaks uh, English. I speak some German. Uh, I, can, I can order in the restaurant and fill some forms. Uh, but that was not a problem. So uh, overall, it's a, a great place to, if you are thinking about your international involvement and perhaps it's your first time for a longer period of time, that's a great place to be. Yeah, thank you for these nice and kind words about Austria. Um, and, uh, and when you were here in Austria, what, what actually did you do as a, as a Fulbright scholar at the Boko? Okay, well, so the this was the both research and teaching uh, program. So I taught a course, which then actually was repeated. I was invited to, for two more years at Boku in summer as a visiting professor to offer a, a, same, a similar course. Uh, so that's, by the way, one of the benefits of a Fulbright that you develop these contacts and my contacts with Austria are still going very strong from that time. And then I was involved with research projects uh, with different uh, colleagues in Austria at, at Boku, at the, the Institute or the, the, I think it was called at that time, Institute of uh, Water Technology or Water uh, Protection. So I was, you know, on a daily basis, I had an office, I was involved with several projects with uh, the, my Austrian colleagues. Uh, so that's professionally. For me, it was also a very interesting situation because I was interested in the concept of sustainability. And please remember, this is now what, uh, 2008. So we are talking about uh, 12, my math is, is, is good years ago, and that was not uh, such, a, such a very popular topic. Uh, but I was interested in this before, and that allowed me to 
focus on this area and explore in many different directions. So it was both a combination of the continuing work and, uh, and I knew some of the, my Austrian colleagues in the, the hosting group before. Uh, so that certainly was, was useful. Uh, meeting students from many countries. I think we had my class was uh, six, seven different countries. And by the way, that's a great achievement of European Union, the Marie Curie, the uh, Erasmus programs, those all these programs, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. So that's in essence was my professional uh, involvement. Yeah, thank you. It's wonderful to, to hear that your experience here, your journey here didn't end when you go, went back to the US, but you still kept the connections to Absolutely. Austria and to establish new partnerships. So just talking about the future, like your future at that time, uh, what were the next professional steps and what was the professional impact on your career of the football experience? Well, again, uh, if you are looking, you know, if we're talking about my Austrian connection, that allow me to develop these uh, contacts. And that's my suggestion also for any Fulbrighter. Go just beyond the hosting group, of course, get involved with them because that's where you belong for the time of your, your um, Fulbright but look at some other places and in austria there's so many other things happening there in uh, so as an example i uh, taught a course a summer course in innsbruck at mci the management uh, center institute uh, and that was part of my connections even from that time i was uh, involved with the albach forum so that's part continues and that's hopefully is a great experience on the other side professionally as i said i was able to focus in this new area and that gave me um, essentially time and, and and resources to develop in in this direction and that became a strong part of my professional uh, expertise and also it enhanced my international outlook and collaboration. Uh, I was always involved with uh, international uh, scholars and professionals. You know, I spent a year in France before that, uh, working with, with a French uh, professionals. But that emphasized the value and benefits, the Fulbright emphasized the value and benefits of uh, this type of activities. So it's, uh, it's it's something that in a way, I don't want to use big word permeate, but I guess that's the term, my, my professional and personal activities. Yeah, I see that your love for Austria um, has continued looking at the, your background. So that's absolutely looks like you're here in Austria, but actually you're in the US now, right? Well, yes, I am in the U.S. I'm in, uh, in, in well, I, I live near Berkeley, uh, but well, I chose this background because I, you know, that reminisces my um, time in Austria very well. We had a, a lot of, lot of experiences. Uh, if you want to see this uh -huh. one, okay, I'll show you better. That's Those who are from not Austria or they're not very familiar with this. Uh, that's uh, the time where the grapes are harvested. And that's yet another very much Austrian experiences of the Heuriger, the, the places you can go and eat and drink wine and enjoy. Yeah, now it's so, wonderful to walk um, in the vineyards and uh, go up to the hills. It's a great time to have this experience to see how wine is grown in Austria. Um, coming back to um, your Fulbright experience and, and what you learned from that. So we have so many grantees now here in Austria and, and some are preparing for submitting their grant. So they depend on your, you know, you know your knowledge and your know-how. So what, what, um, what, what would you be your advice for future Fulbrighter? What 
what would you have loved to have known when you started your grant? Well, I think it is just like with every other program, the more homework you do before, the better your outcome will be. So obviously it is a serious scientific scholarly uh, program. So your uh, application has to make sense and also fit into the uh, hosting institution. Uh, I know that uh, letters of invitation or something like this are not always required, but contacting people at your host institution, I think is extremely useful because you're going to work with them if you are successful. And uh, it makes simply a lot of sense to know what they are doing. So I would start with this, do a lot of research on the where you are going and what you want to do. And then, you know, show your professionalism, show your, uh, you know, knowledge of the area, show your specific goals and outcomes. And that, that should make a successful, a successful program, successful proposal. Uh, so I think that's the part. And then of course, you know, try to learn everything there is to learn before you come. And this is much easier now. Uh, things sort of logistics, like where you're gonna live and that sometimes the host institution will help you. Sometimes you are more in your own, I think, uh, but that's not, much less problems in these days than it was even even when we were in Austria. Uh, prepare yourself for some unexpected things. You know, there's there are, there are obviously differences, uh, and and enjoy them. Try to find why things happen in your host country the way uh, and host culture the way they are, and not exactly what you would expect where you live. So I think that's the, the basic idea. Do homework, contact the uh, institution. In my case, it was very, very good because I knew uh, somewhat slightly professionally uh, the colleague that was the uh, my official host there. And that was very, very good. Um, you know, there's always logistics in terms of uh, preparing your family and, you know, what to do with your home here and um, things of that sort, but that's all doable. And once you're, at, um, once you're at the ground here, when, once you're in Austria, um, what are the, what experience do you remember? What was like really astonishing? Well, you know, as I said, the the uh, nice part about the the Fulbright, and that's the, the cherished part, is that you are no longer a tourist. You live here, although you are sheltered from some of the you know longer term issues. You know, you don't have to deal with uh, perhaps that much bureaucracy and and so on. Uh, but uh, what was the? Um, I think. When we when we came here and we spent some time, there were probably two major aspects, cultural aspects. Professionally, it's I would say similar. Uh, you know, there are differences, of course. Uh, but uh, if you are teaching at the university or you're doing research, it's very similar. It's all international international um, standard. Uh, but culturally, I think one was that. Uh, despite visiting Austria before, I didn't really realize how many different regions and different cultures are in Austria and how much they are cherished. So if you are, one of my friends uh, was from Tyrol, although he lived in Vienna for 25 years, but he was still from Tyrol, okay? And, uh, and people could tell. And then the second one is the, the kind of uh, joy of life, there is, uh, Austria is really one of the few places where people, I think overall, enjoy living, enjoy their professional activities, but enjoy also a beautiful scenery, cultural events. Well, Vienna is, is obviously a center of music and culture, and there's so many things to happen, so try to use that. So that's, that's essentially what, what the essence of Austria was. And uh, so try to reach out to as many places as you, and, and people as you can. 
Thank you for this wonderful advice for Fulbrighters. I know that there are questions from the community. So that's why I'm now open it up uh, and ask Mitch uh, to present the questions from the community. Hey, Slav, uh, great to see you here today. And uh, our first question Likewise. from the community is if you could reapply for Fulbright, what would you study now and why? Okay, that's, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I would continue to work with the area of sustainability because this is very important on the professionally, but also socially, but with an addition of uh, what I would call digitization, things like blockchain and entrepreneurship. Uh, and there are strong elements of these both uh, trends in, in Austria. Uh, one example I've I'm actually looking right now, and I would be delighted to, to do this as a Fulbright, is to look at how we can trace environmental impacts of, for example, mining or commodities uh, all across the supply chain and how they can be embedded in the concept of sustainability. So digitization and going beyond the just a technical aspects, but looking in the social aspects as well. We have another question from the community. Sure. What can you tell us about the University of California that the public does not know? Well, yeah, that, that's a, a, a tricky one because I'm not sure how much you know about this. So first of all, uh, University of California is composed of 10 campuses that are pretty much independent and Berkeley is, is one of them. So officially the name of the institution I am, it's University of California at Berkeley. And this is the flagship campus. We, of course, think it's the best one. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, trivia, perhaps. So, you know, you can always find a lot of stuff on, on the web. The trivia, um, first of all, if you get a Nobel Prize, you actually get free and reserved parking spot on campus. And that's the only one, except perhaps for the chancellor. Uh, so that's a great incentive because parking is hell. Uh, the other one, uh, there are, at, by my count, at least four chemical elements that are named or related to Berkeley. So there's, of course, Berkelium, Californium, but also Laurentium and Cyborgium, named after two eminent physicists who were uh, here at Berkeley. What else? Uh, it's a very international campus. We get students from all over the world, and um, it's also very nice physically. Um, landscape and so on. And we are all yearning to go back to, to, to campus. Hope that that gives you something about Berkeley that you didn't know. Thank you so much, Slav. One more question before we end today's alum chat. What tips and tricks can you share with us that our informal rules are not in the books? That's also a very interesting one. And my general answer would be, do not take no for an answer and ask for help. And I'll just give you my personal example from uh, just after arrival in, in, in Vienna. We lived in a hotel for a while uh, before we found the place and uh, we needed to open a bank account because we needed to get money from Fulbright. Well, it turns out to open a bank account after a few iterations, it requires a mail that settle, a registration form uh, on which you had to have a permanent residence. And hotel did not count at that time. So what do we do? I went to the hotel manager and said, look, if I don't have a mail that settle, I cannot open a bank account and therefore I won't get money and I cannot pay for the hotel. So we found a solution that they will write on the form and it was perhaps slightly illegal, but uh, they just wrote on the form, the street address and they signed it. So it was not a hotel on a form. And then I went to this very beautiful uh, place at the, the district, um, what you call it, um, office in the 19th uh, district, uh, a beautiful Baroque palace and the person sitting there and just took this form, logged in computer, gave me a stamp and was it. 
So again, a situation is that you will find sometimes unexpected things, ask for help and uh, persist and things will work out. That's probably the best I can tell. Uh, of course, you know, there are rules and regulations and, you know, if uh, you are not allowed to drive faster than 30 kilometers per hour through the village, don't, because there are traffic cameras very, very uh, prominently displayed. So use common sense, but also try to do what you, what you want to do within the, uh, the circumstances. So thank you for this important answer to this really, really important question for our grants here in Austria, as well as the ones who are about to come. Um, yeah, and, and as I said, do your, do your do your homework. That definitely. So we will do we will we will make sure that our grants who come to Austria know about this, that they will do their homework, we do ours, and with this. I think they will have a wonderful opportunity in Austria. And all, all the important information you shared about uh, the University of California at Berkeley, um, I think with all of this, we will have now many applicants from Austrian universities wanting to go to Berkeley. Well, so that, would be, that would be great. Expect full writers um, at your campus in the future. And um, I really, really want to thank you for your time. And oh, it's my pleasure. It, yeah, it brought me a lot of reminiscing uh, memories. And since you ask about the coffee, I actually have a picture of my favorite aspect oh. of, of uh, I'll close the, this. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And only in Austria. That's true. So. so um, enjoy forever. If you are in Austria, enjoy it. And if you are planning, plan to enjoy it. Thank Expect you. to enjoy it. Thank you for this wonderful final words. With this, I want to say thank you to the entire audience uh, who joined us today and hope that you all come back to the next alum chat um, to have a conversation about the Fulbright Austria experience here with this. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tschüss.